celebrate for us, please. Thank you, Monsignor. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be always with you. And also with you. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate well these most sacred mysteries, we stop to think about our sins, so that at the same time we re might remember God's wonderful mercy and his love for us. Lord Jesus, you came among us to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came among us to forgive the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the splendor, the glory of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us forgive us our sins, and bring us into life everlasting. Amen. And now we praise our God as we say, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now we pray. Almighty Father, you are strong and your justice is right and your mercy is great. Protect us from all burdens and challenges here in this life. Shield our minds from distortion of pride and enfold us with the desire of your loving design. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. It happened that seven brothers were with their mother, were arrested and tortured with whips and scourges by the king to force them to eat pork in violation of God's law. One of the brothers speaking for the others said, what do you expect to achieve by questioning us? We are ready to die rather than transgress the laws of all of our ancestors. At that point of death, he said, you are cursed fiend. You are depriving us of this present life, but the king of the world will raise us up to live again forever. It is for his laws that we are dying. After him, the third suffered their cruel sport he put out his tongue at once when told to do so and bravely held out his hands as he spoke these noble words. It was from heaven that I received these. For the sake of his laws, I disdain them. For him, I hope to receive them again. Even the king and his attendants marveled at the young man's courage because he regarded his sufferings as nothing. And after he had died, they tortured and maltreated the fourth brother in the same way. And when he was near death, he said, It is my choice to die at the hands of men with the hope that God gives me of being raised up by him. But for you, there will be no resurrection to life. That's the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our response psalm. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Hear, O Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry. Hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul 
to the Cephalonians. Brothers and sisters, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting judgment, encouragement, good hope through his grace, encourage your hearts and strengthen them in every good deed and word. Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us so that the word of the Lord may speed forward and be glorified as it did among you, and that we may be delivered from the perverse and wicked people. For not all have faith, but the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. We are confident of you in the Lord that what we instruct you, you are doing and will continue to do. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the endurance of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. taking from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Sadducees, those who deny the resurrection, came forward and they questioned Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if someone's brother dies and they leave a wife with no children, that brother must accept her to raise her up for her descendant's brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first married the woman, but the brother died without children. And then the second and then the third married, all the way down to the seventh, without children. Finally, the woman herself died. Now, at the resurrection, Whose wife will she be? For all seven married her. And Jesus said to them, The children of this age married, and they are remarried. But those who are deemed worthy for the coming age and the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given to marriage. They can no longer die, for they have become like the angels, and they are called God's children because they are the ones who be raised up. That the dead will rise, even Moses himself knew in the passage about the bush when he called out to the Lord, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, and he said that the God was not of the dead but of the living. For to him, all things are alive. That's good news. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you, Lord Jesus Christ. A while ago, there was an advertisement. It was for a soda pop. And the advertisement, it said that that particular soda pop was the real thing. It was trying to convince us that anything else, any other kind of soda pop, would not satisfy us. That particular one, and only that one, was the real thing. The gospel today, at least part of the gospel message, is trying to convince us a little bit in the same way. The Lord Jesus knows that all of us are searching for the real thing, that our hearts and our minds truly want contentment, peace, and joy and a peace that continues forever. And Jesus says, don't judge the worth of things here on earth according to human values, but
but judge according to God. And Jesus says that you can become and experience the real thing, what your heart is searching for. We, I'm sure, we have many, many different experiences here in life, and we want that peace. And Jesus is aware of all of our journeys, all of our experience, good and bad, holy and not. And Jesus sees that the deepest desire is for us to know this life fully. St. Paul wrote and said, to live, that is Christ. If we really want to have a life that has meaning to the full, where our heart is content, that's Christ, to become united with him the real thing. So how do you and I know if we're making some progress to the contentment that we're searching for? If we are becoming successful, how do we know it? There are three things. First, mercy. Does your life show a mercy without bounds? That it is a mercy for all in every situation. Second, forgiveness. Does your life show a forgiveness that is so deep that in your forgiving the other person, you yourself experience a freedom? Third, love. Is your life reflected of a love that is not only of the mind, but is of action? That deep love. If your life can be said to show those three things, you are becoming one with Christ. You are living Christ. He is the real thing. May we truly be convinced of it and embrace Him, our Savior God. Now we lift up a few of our prayers this day. First, we pray, as always, for John Paul, our Pope, for Cardinal Law, our Bishop, for all church leaders, that they will be continued to be wonderful, clear signs and expressions of God's faithfulness here on earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord accept prayer. our prayer. Lord, we pray for all people who struggle with belief. We ask that your Holy Spirit will continue to guide them. We pray to the Lord. Lord Hear Lord. our prayer. Wonderful God and Father, a few of our prayers we have lifted up to you Maybe inside there are private prayers. Please answer all prayers through your Son, Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Would you pray with me that this, our sacrifice, will be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and the glory of his name for us and for all his church. God of mercy, in this Eucharist, we proclaim the death of the Lord. Accept our gifts that we present to you. Help us to follow him with with love, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, it is truly always right for you, a powerful God, living forever, to thank and to praise you. In you we live and move and have our being. 
each day you show us a Father's love, your Holy Spirit dwelling here with us that gives us here on earth the hope of unending joy. Your gift of the Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is now the foretaste and the promise of the Paschal Feast in heaven. So with thankful praise in the company of the angels, we glorify your wonders. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy, indeed the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he died, a death he freely accepted, with the twelve disciples gathered round, he took the bread, he broke it, he gave it to them, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. And now we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share the body and blood of Christ be gathered together in unity through the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Help us to grow in love together with John Paul, our Pope, Cardinal Law, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their death with the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Help us to become worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. Permit us to praise you in union with them and to give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
pray using the same, same thoughts that Jesus himself used so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us against anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you told your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. This is the Lamb of God. This is that which takes away the sins of the world. And happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down, O weary one, lay down your head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was, so weary, worn, and sad. I Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the nourishment that you give us through your holy gifts. Pour out your spirit upon us and in your strength from this food from heaven, keep us single-minded to your service. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go now to live it in peace and in joy. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Father Michael, for that beautiful celebration of the Eucharist this morning uh, using that beautiful... Uh, language of sign. That you've learned some signs yourself, my senior, <laughs> I, I know. I have. Some, some good ones and some not so good ones. Oh, I'm not saying that. <laughs> I, I know. just said you learned them. <laughs> um, 
Father Michael Medes is uh, uh, a native of Bridgewater, and he simply because he was interested in ministry to the deaf community, um, went to Gallaudet College in Washington, D.C., and learned how to sign. He himself obviously is not deaf, nor were any members of his family. It's a question of service to his brothers and sisters, um, and it's an indication of what a really uh, good priest he is. Well, thank you. That's sort of humbling to sign that I'm a good priest, but I'll accept the compliment anyway. <laughs> but um, tell us about your ministry. Well, really, the deaf community is throughout the Archdiocese of Boston. It's a wonderful group of people. Uh, most of the people that you see here that have prayed with us have driven probably about an hour to be able to arrive to the TV studio. They drive very typically about 50 minutes one way each Sunday to be able to come and to celebrate the signed Mass with us. So it's a, it's a community that is really in every neighborhood and very faith-filled. A uh, very, very special group of people. Yeah. And their, uh, their priest is a very special priest. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and it's a... You know, they say that sign language is our first language because uh, all of us, as babies, all of us gesture. You know? And then maybe later on, some people may p uh, pick up a verbal language but all of us are signers in the beginning. And so some people say that's God's true language because it's all of us in the beginning. Beautiful. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Monsignor. <clears throat> We'd like to uh, always welcome, um, thank Channel 7 for their cooperation with us in producing this Mass. This Mass, uh, as you know at home, means so very much to so many who are homebound, who are ill and unable to uh, celebrate Mass in their parish communities. And so we are extremely grateful to Channel 7 uh, for their cooperation with us. We would remind you that uh, the bulletins are ready, and if you would uh, like to receive a bulletin, you can uh, receive it by calling or writing uh, the uh, station in Newton. Thank you for joining us this morning, and may God bless you. The church and the world. Any correspondence should be addressed to Monsignor Paul McInerney, Boston Catholic Television Center, 55 Chapel Street, Box 9109, Newtonville, Massachusetts, 02460.